Hello, quilt friends. Uh, this video is pretty much going to be the same as what I did yesterday on Facebook Live. So if you've seen that video, this might be a repeat. But I want to make sure that um, there might be people who um, are subscribed to the YouTube that are not in the Facebook group. So I want to make sure that if you're interested that you could get this uh, video. So we are going to start a quilt along soon doing this, um, this one right here from Little Quilts, this welcome. It is 45 and a half by 45 and a half approximately. And um, it talks about this little booklet. It's just a small one here. It has this one and it has this one. <clears throat> but it talks about magic colors, which I really uh, believe some quilts can look super flat. Some can look very exciting. And so um, they have some that they call uh, magic fabrics. So we talked about that a little bit yesterday and I'm gonna talk about that and just kind of show you some of the fabric that I have pulled. Um, I don't know if this is the fabric I'm going to be using, but I don't know, there's so many options sometimes, like what do I wanna make and which fabric do I wanna use? Because I love reproduction fabrics and they are very zingy too. So the ones I'm gonna show you today are reproductions and they would make a great quilt like this. So the first one, they call it magic fabrics because it says when added to most projects, add an aged look as well as help create an interesting quilt full of surprises for the beholder. So um, I have a welcome, I have this quilt, which I made years ago, probably like 1997, I think the date is on it, um, and is very faded, <clears throat> and it's very kind of flat looking because the colors have faded so much. So I'm totally willing to make another one. But um, anyway, so we're gonna talk about that a little bit. So black is the one that they suggest first. And there are so many varieties of black. So we are going to look at this one first. This lovely little black, almost a gray print. Um, I don't, very rarely do I ever use just something straight black. Um, so this, but from a distance, you could applique something really dark on that and there would be plenty of contrast. Um, plenty of contrast. So um, this is a, a great black print. Um, the other thing that they say too, prints, plaids, and uh, plaids and stripes. So um, I love movement in fabric. So here's one right here, the little cheddar and a diagonal, um, a diagonal print with gray and some black. And I think this one would be awesome to use in any quilt. I would use these in any of my scrap quilts. Um, here's a gray with black dots. And I realized yesterday that first off, they're probably making like a lot of like modeled kind of background, kind of like the grunge. Um, and But I have a lot of them, which I don't think I really realized until you really start analyzing and looking at the fabric. So this one I would look at as being a gray. I would totally feel comfortable putting one of the letters on top of this if there was enough contrast. I do say if you're going to make this quilt and you're gonna applique the letters welcome, I would say make sure that you have plenty of contrast between your applique piece and your background piece or it's gonna might look like Elkum or might look like we come. Um, one of the letters might not be, um, you know, you may not see it very well. So personally, I feel like this M, this red background and the red house are a little close together. That's what I see like really uh, when I first look at this quilt. So I'm probably gonna make this uh, background of the M a little bit different color than the house above it for sure. So, um, okay, stripes, boom, love stripes. These are reproductions. So um, you might look at that and go, yeah, that's not a reproduction. But if you look at old quilts, this type of print is in old quilts. A lot of them, especially the red and like the beige or red and white, red and ecru, um, a lot uh, was used then. So um, anyway, so those are some blacks. Then it says bubblegum pink. So what I always look at bubblegum pink as being like a double pink. 
So we have this. So it actually is teeny, teeny, tiny checks. But if you look at it from a distance, it really just looks kind of solid. So um, I think when people, or even when you are looking at your quilt up close, you it, it adds interest to have something besides solids. Um, here we go, stripes again. Great little pink on pink stripe is awesome. And then here's just a straight double pink. This would make a wonderful background for a letter too. If you're gonna do the letters in black, I actually think I'm going to do my letters in black so you can see them really well. Um, so this would make a great background if you wanted to use that for that. And then another one, which is another stripe. So I didn't even look in my uh, homespuns. I probably have black, blue, red. I probably have a lot of colors in my homespuns as well. Um, but this one, is really nice and would make um, some wonderful movement and some wonderful magic in your quilt. So purple, I don't usually use a lot of purple unless the original quilt has a lot of purple in it. Um, but I do have a lot of purple reproductions because they're getting harder to find. Um, and I think that they were kind of used as a morning print. So. Here's one that also has movements. It's not just stripes, but it looks kind of striped. <laughs> so um, I consider this to be kind of a little magic fabric. This one also is kind of that mottled background, mottled, M-O-T-T-L-E-D is what I'm saying. And then if you look close, you can actually see a little bit of a print in there as well, but um, purple is a great reproduction. And then I pulled this one out as well because I do plan on using red for sure in this quilt. And so that, I mean, look at the movement in that. I love this print and it has purple and red. Who thinks purple and red would, uh, would go together? But it looks great on this piece of fabric. It looks like it could be a shirt, be the type of shirt you see at church that you want to like snip somebody's snip a little hole in there. Brown. Um, I did not pull any other browns out because I think you could go with any brown um, if it's reproduction or not. So I have so many browns. Here's some I'm actually putting together right now for my uh, panel challenge. There's like a little golden brown or here's just like a, oh, this one's not even connected to my sewing room, my sewing machine right now. So I can show these to you brown. Um, here's a wonderful little brown right here. Oops. So um, lots of brown. Just, you know, I don't think really as far as reproduction fabrics, like even like this, um, there's nothing really off limits. So on this particular one that I'm doing, I'm trying not to use um, anything that's like super like really bright and in your face like a super bright cheddar but um so browns and tans tans make great little background pieces too so the other thing that they had mentioned which i dropped my book was i believe they just called it gold mustard gold so that can embrace a huge variety of fabric so i was actually getting this one ready to uh put my m on it um, or not my M, my W on it. Looks like an M upside down, but uh, for the first block. So this is kind of a definitely movement, um, gold. This one I look at as being very gold. This one I look at as being um, kind of a dark yellow with gold sprigs. And I love, I love all of these and I'm showing you. And I would not hesitate to use any of these in any of my scrap or reproduction quilts at all. And especially this one even coming up. I just am not sure if I'm gonna go, I might go a little bit more uh, patriotic, which a lot of it is, like the entire border is red, like basically red, white, and blue. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll just go scrappy. I might flip a coin. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do. And then we have one more 
look at this, lots of movement, kind of a stripey, um, a serpentine maybe is what that's called with flowers, but it has gold, has yellow, has some brown, and this would also look amazing um, in any kind of reproduction or little quilt, any kind of little quilt that you wanna do. So um, anyway, I hope that you're gonna join me um, there is, this pattern is available online as a digital pattern. So if you cannot find this, if, or if you do not have this in your stash and you want to um, sew along with us, then um, email me and I will give you the link to the digital download. So I know um, I had to get mine off of eBay. I was, I, I made it at one point, but I probably passed the book along because I generally don't remake um, the same quilts but I'm going to this time. So um, anyway, let me know what, you, what fabrics you like to use, whether you have magic fabric that you're like, yes, I wanna use this in almost every, every one of my quilts. Um, and then let me know if you want to, the link to this digital. Um, I'm, I'm not affiliated with the person that has it and they're probably wondering like, why are so many people downloading this all of a sudden? So anyway, um, I hope you sew along and I hope you could see these fabrics good um, on the YouTube video. So, all right, take care and have a wonderful afternoon.